Hey, welcome to the stream, everybody. It's me. <laughs> it's Paper Mario Day, because it's Sunday. Um, and it's going to be Raymond Day after that, too. This is going to be here. And we're going to play Raymond. <laughs> Alrighty. We'll just get right to it, I guess. I've been playing Super Pac-Man lately. If you watched the and Ashes stream, I like found out that Super Pac-Man was on the Switch right at the end of that stream. And then right when it... Oh wait, there's a thing I noticed. Um, apparently it should be possible to get rid of the overlay. There we go. I didn't know that they added that. I'm, I like that. <laughs> There you go. Ah, look at that. It like fills up more of the screen too. And we got the good beans. I just wish that wasn't on by default. But uh, it's okay, I guess. Also, I don't remember what to do. I gotta go back and see the mouse guy, cause... No heckin' clue. What do? I think to go back and see the mouse guy, I gotta go... around... Yeah. Maybe, I think, I think my choice to, uh... And the stream off where I did last time was a bad idea, because I don't remember what we're supposed to do at all. Right, there's a stone. Okay, now I know what I'm supposed to do. We're just wandering the desert. And hoping for the best. <laughs> okay. those roundness in there. What are those? They're just selling green. <laughs> Hi, Shan. Nice to see you. So how do I activate this stone? I guess it just appears. I guess that must not be close at all, huh? Those are big peas, if those are peas, Shan. Huh, no clue how this works. Hmm. Is it? No? The maper of the paper? <laughs> oh! Well, this pulse stone isn't flashing at all. I don't really... Understand. I thought it was gonna flash the whole time. And that I would just understand. But, uh. Oh! Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, it's beeping now. Ah, now I understand. Still beeping a little bit. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's oh, beeping a lot. Like a horrible noise that it makes, though. Oh, yeah, I don't have room for items. Yeah, I started playing Super Pac-Man. Well, I guess I've just been playing it. It's not really a game you start playing. Like, it doesn't really have a finish. But speaking of, I was reminded because speaking of horrible noises, that game sounds terrible. The sound design of that game is just absolutely awful. I don't know what they were doing. Oh yeah, we went here before. It's like, let me play for you the sound of the intermissions in Super Pac-Man. Oh, once this is done doing its thing. Yeah, I had only played Super Pac-Man um, in an arcade before. In an arcade that has since gone out of business, sadly, because it was a really nice one. Um, it was in Astoria, Oregon. They used to, it was they also had like actual video game consoles that you could like pay to like just play the. Um, the, the, you could just play the console for, like, a certain amount of time. And they had a bunch of them. Like, they had the Nintendo 64. They had all the modern ones. They had... They just had everything. They had a VR thing. And they had... They had a lot of refurbished arcade machines as well, where it was just, you know, the original arcade cabinet. But they had replaced the screen with an LCD screen, and... which will have more longevity, and the, the image quality is clearer. Also, VT97, yeah, you're thinking of Pac-Man 2, The New Adventures. I streamed that, by the way. That was the second game I ever streamed. <laughs> if you go way back on my YouTube channel, you can find me playing that. With my old, awful microphone quality. Right, but let me show you what the intermissions sound like in Super Pac-Man, because it's just horrid. I don't know what they did. The whole game sounds this awful, by the way. There you go. <laughs> hey, I liked Pac-Man too. I don't think it's horrible. It's really interesting. <laughs> Here we go. Oh yeah, I forgot about the, the spinning. Blag blog. You scary Tutankoopa. Koopa. Okay. Interesting music here. Man, this is extreme Bug Fables flashbacks. There's an area that looks a lot like this in Bug Fables. <laughs> this music fits Cooper's blank dead stare. That's not how I was interpreting Cooper, but okay. Pokey Mummy. They're just blue. It was a better mummy, uh, mummy pokey in New Super Mario Bros. In fact, I think it was just called mummy pokey. Super Pac-Man is just kind of a weird game. I'm like glad, like, I got it, uh, for like a dollar because of, 
Oops, I accidentally bumped the capture card cable. And I missed out on some coins because I couldn't see them. <laughs> hey, come back. Hello. There we go. And now we're getting the, the crackles. This should go away shortly. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Turn this down again slightly. <laughs> so, I watched an interesting video the other day I've been meaning to talk about. This is a good time to talk about it. About the history of Nintendo's official emulators. Um, I, I, whoa, I wasn't paying attention. Um, and it was really interesting. Apparently the worst that they ever did with their emulation was on the Wii U. Um, partially but not completely just because of the, uh... The bizarre, like, really dark filter they put on everything, which was supposedly for... Uh... Anti-epilepsy. But... It was just kind of the worst possible way to do anti-epilepsy, because in Nintendo's more recent emulators, they have actual anti-epilepsy measures in them that don't require just dimming the screen ridiculously. <laughs> and they said that uh, the Wii, Wii uh, emulation Wii Virtual Console was, like, significantly better than the Wii U. And you could still play it on the Wii U. You could you could load up Wii Virtual Console on there. The so Wii U Virtual Console, other than for consoles that the Wii didn't have, was, like, extremely redundant. <laughs> no, they all had the dark filter, Adam. Even the, even the DS had it, according to the video. It was worst on the Nintendo 64 emulation because it was like extra, extra dark. Um, the DS emulator on the Wii U apparently was really good though, and it was made by the same people who then went on to make their current emulators, which are also very good. Um, they said they were so they were kind they uh. So, the NES and Super NES emulation, and the Sega Genesis emulation they have on Nintendo Online is basically, like, flawless. Like, it's just really good. It's the best they've ever had. And the same team did the Nintendo 64 emulation, so it's really kind of off that it's got the problems it does. Uh, the video said that they're pretty sure that it's just because Nintendo rushed them. That if, uh... It seems like the emulation for Nintendo 64 was really rushed for some reason. Um, and if they had had more time, they probably would have uh, turned out as good as the others, but fortunately that's not how it worked out. Um, and of course the Super NES Online has rollback netcode. Um, which they said could probably have been ported to the NES Online as well. But they said that they didn't expect Nintendo 6... They just didn't even expect Nintendo 64 emulation to have rollback. Because... Rollback netcode takes a lot of processing power. Especially when it's on like something arbitrary. Like if you're not making it for just like one specific game. Um, you're making it for an emulator. It has to work for a lot of different games. Um, and so that's a that's a bit of a task. But uh, like Super NES doesn't take a lot of processing power to emulate, so they were able to do it. Um, but the Nintendo 64 takes a lot of processing power to emulate, and so does Rollback Netcode. So. It was kind of, like, 
inevitable that the Switch wasn't gonna quite have enough processing power to do both at the same time. Ow. Also, something that's interesting that I didn't realize is that the 3DS and the Wii U use the exact same emulators for their virtual console. Like, it's just the exact same software on both consoles. Like, it's really... it's kind of amazing, the parody that the 3DS and the Wii U had with each other. Like, no wonder there were so many Wii U ports to the 3DS, because it seems like it was, like... They were really compatible with each other, strangely. It's like, you wouldn't expect it. Like, they seem so different on the, on the face of things. But they're, like, really compatible. <laughs> ah! Alright, I have Paracarry now. It's so funny that I have to use the, the, the right stick to switch. There you go. And now we need... On bet. Boom. Uh, I forgot to reset my internet before the stream, and we're getting some some farts with the connection. Gosh dang it! I was like, oh, it'll it'll be fine. I I I don't need to reset the internet, right? It'll be fine this time, right? Nope. Because <laughs> I still don't understand why that's a problem, but... It is. But yeah, about Nintendo 64 emulation on the Switch online thing. I seem pretty confident that it'll get better, because... The longer they have time to work on it, just the better it will get. Because it seems like they just rushed it out. So, we'll see. Okay, this is just ridiculous. So I'm going to I'm going to restart the stream. Sorry. It's just god, if I forget to reset the internet connection before the stream, it just gets awful. I don't understand. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, I think we're back online. Uh, people watching on YouTube in the future will notice nothing. <laughs> Except for probably the video quality is just better again now because the, the bitrate isn't pooping. Alright, back to game. There we go. Do, do, do. Yeah, poop free bitrate. <laughs> Duh. Um, I think the only say the only omission from the uh, the uh, video about uh, Nintendo's emulation was their recent like Game and Watch systems. I'd, I'm really curious about what's going on on those. They didn't cover it. Ah. I guess I'll just bomb. Somebody probably has a video about what's going on on the, the, the Game & Watch systems. We could find that if I wanted to. <laughs> I 
Oh, there's a swoop. Did you know, I always thought that those things were called, uh... Swoopers. Oh yeah, they are called swo swoopers. Now wait a minute. Because nowadays they're actually called swoops, and I swear it was only actually like one thing. Apparently they were called swoopers here too. Interesting. Let me look that up, because I remember there's something weird with their names. Mario... Swooper. Yeah, they're just called swoops now. When when did that change? Because I swear it was really early. I think, yeah, they were called... Okay, so they were first called swoops in Super Mario 64. Um, and they've been that ever since. I feel like Swooper is a... is a better name. Yeah, by Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, they were called... Swoops. This game came out after Super Mario 64, so it's using the... it's like... still stuck using the old name. Wild. <laughs> this is a reminder that Nintendo of Europe refuses to admit that Yoshi is a dinosaur. <laughs> well, according to the Mario Wiki VT97, they've been calling it Swoop consistently since Super Mario 64, with the exception of, uh... Paper Mario. Oh, I see. So it's a little bit confusing. They called it... So it seems like spin-offs uh, call them swoopers pretty often. Or, yeah, so spin-off games kept calling them swoopers um, until Paper Mario Sticker Star, and then they stopped. Interesting. Mario Kart DS called them swoops. Well, how do they know what they called them? Hey, wait a minute. Maybe that's where the confusion is. I feel like they weren't always officially named in all of these, and so when not given a name for anything that came after Super Mario 64, they're probably just defaulting to calling them swoops. That's gotta be what's happening here. That would that would make it make sense, I think. Alright, let's continue. There you go. I don't think enemies are usually named in the files in the uh, Mario games. Other than just like data names. But I don't know. <laughs> I like thwimps. Wimps are the greatest enemies in Super Mario World, of course. Let's try Paracarry. Oh. Well, it already died. I always remember Thwimps just because Vine Sauce loves them, and every time he plays Super Mario World, he takes the time to point them out. Be like, hey guys, you know about the Thwimps? <laughs> so now I know about the Thwimps. Oh, Paracarry uses his dang feet. Like an asshole. Oh my god. <laughs> Everybody in the chat saying thwimp. Ah! Ah! 
Ah, there we go. Whack his bump. I don't need whack his bump exactly. Okay, I didn't know how that worked. <laughs> Well, Paracarry sucks for this. I gotta get somebody else out here. Come on, Cooper. Uh-oh! His HP is going down! Uh-oh, Spaghetti-o! Uh-oh! Ah, peas. How much of this am I gonna have to replay now? Am I just gonna have to, like, redo everything I did on the stream today, basically? Yep. But I'm sure excited about that! Oh boy! Just what I wanted! Ooh. <laughs> I'm okay, I swear. Ah. So I've been watching, uh, lately, the last couple days, while sitting in bed at night. I have been listening to compilations of creepypastas. One was, th it was, one was three hours of like, lost episode creepypastas. And the other one I'm still... Um, working through is three hours of... Just video game creepypastas. Including the classics like Ben Drowned and that kind of stuff. Um... But it's so funny, like, after that many of them, they all just blend together. Like, it's just the same story every time. It's so funny. Yeah, Sonic.exe was in there. Why couldn't Ben just learn how to swim? Lena.ini. Yeah, that's the creepy poster for Flutterbug. Um, a couple of my favorites for as far as, uh, like... Because there's always, there's got to be some way that the that the protagonist ends up with the weird show or game or whatever, right? Um, and there's always some slight variation, but it's always like they find some really sketchy copy and they just, they for one reason or another don't question it. And then there's the part where the weird stuff starts happening, but they keep playing anyway. And like, all that kind of stuff. Um, but a couple of my favorites for, uh, ways that they got the things... Um, was... Th <laughs> one... <laughs> so this was an ALF creepypasta, which is just funny to me, just on the surface. Because it's ALF. How am I st <laughs> You made a creepy pasta about Alf. But anyway, they got this Alf DVD from a homeless man living in Japan. That was how that was what it was. They they bought the Alf DVD from a homeless man in Japan. They were that specific. I don't understand. And then um is a Plants vs. Zombies creepypasta I just heard just before the stream. Which I think I was vaguely aware of before. It's called Dead Plants. Also, I want more badge points still. Um... But this one was fairly unique in where they got it from. And, um... Hello, Sergeant Bloody. Um, it was they wanted to play... Like, so that that's the conceit of most of these is that 
the person in the story gets nostalgic for something and wants to replay it, right? And they like, for one reason or another, for some reason, they like struggle to find it. Um, and oftentimes it's really absurd because it's just something normal like Super Mario 64 or in this case Plants vs. Zombies. And for some reason they just can't find it. Um, and uh, in this case they decided they wanted to get Plants vs. Zombies and for some reason couldn't find it. And so went to torrent it. And then they found... They found a torrent of it that had only one cedar. Which is like, there's gotta be other ones. There's gotta be other torrents of it, right? Like, you don't have to pick the one that only has one cedar. Why would you pick the one that only has one cedar? And then it turns out to be a weird, creepy person. <laughs> and again, I can't take it seriously. It's Plants vs. Zombies. It's so silly. How- what is supposed to be scary? <laughs> I mean, it does have zombies, but they're not scary zombies. By any means. <laughs> I think my favorite creepypastas are still just, you know, the classics that- Like, a lot of people said that their- their favorites were just the ones that- have been around a long time and that they read when they were younger. Like, I still like Ben Drowned, of course. I like, um, the Buried Alive Pokemon Creepypasta. I like the, uh, the, the Lavender Town one. Like, back when they, when these things were cool and new and not like, I was telling Sasha last night, I feel like everybody's just trying to to get that high again of uh, what it felt like the first time that they read one of these creepypastas. And instead of trying to be new and creative to get that, to reach that high again, they're just, like, trying to do the same thing over and over again and hope that it makes them feel as good as it did back then. <laughs> Um, I think the best creepypasta that I heard in all of this, that I hadn't heard before, was one, um, I think it was called Candle Cove. And the basic summary is that it was somebody who was remembering a weird show, weird kids show, that, uh, they had seen as a kid, and, like, it was, like, it was pretty realistic, because it was, it was based on, you know, the... The thing, Lost Media, right? It's where they like went online and were trying to remember stuff about it, and then they, they find other people on Reddit or whatever who remember other details about it, and they're all like kind of weird and unsettling. Um, but it, my, what made me like it so much was just that it has, um, like a, I thought it had a genuinely good twist at the end, like almost like a Twilight Zone plot type of twist. Um, and it was just that they went to visit their mom, their, their elderly mother, um, and ask her if she remembered that show. And she was like, oh, I'm impressed you remember that. And was like, every, every, uh, like, Wednesday or whatever, you would say, I'm gonna go watch Candle Cove, and then you would sit in front of... Uh, you would turn the TV to static and stare blankly at it for a while. <laughs> it's like you had such an imagination, and it was like, ooh, that's a good twist. <laughs> oh, interesting. I like that one. <laughs> I think it's interesting the way that horror stuff tends to, like, suffer from being cliché. I feel like you can get away from clichés by just being 
weird, I guess, you know? <laughs> I feel like a lot of these creepypastas, the reason they feel so cliche is they sort of explain too much, if that makes sense. Like, they give too much... they make it, like, feel too real. And... Well, I mean, some, like, in the Candle Cove example, sort of tying it into reality worked well. But, like, I don't know, I feel like, at least for me, horror stuff works better when it's sort of abstractified a good degree. Uh-oh. Like, um, Petscop. Petscop is really weird, and I feel like it, uh, benefits from that. I also like when horror stuff, like Petscop, sort of builds stuff up over time and, like, has all these little details that you pay attention to and you see them come back and, like, it's like a puzzle, almost. I really, really liked that. Deltarune, despite not exactly being horror, feels a lot... The structure of it feels a lot like Petscop, actually. Because <laughs> it's got all these... It, and it's playing the long game with its buildup of information because like you need to have un you need to have understanding of Undertale to make connections in Deltarune. So that's like a whole other beast. Do I have a favorite bad creepypasta? Oh yeah, I've got a couple of those that I remember. Um <laughs> One of them, there's a Super Mario 128 creepypasta that I remember, uh, listening to, like, in 2016. I remember for Halloween in 2016, I got into reading, uh, or, well, listening to creepypastas being read. Um, and I remember that one. And there's also the Super Mario World I Hate You creepypasta, which is pretty great. <laughs> That one has a whole ROM hack that goes with it. That's pretty great. <laughs> Where it ends with the zombie Luigi. There's one creepypasta I heard about that's just called Mario. And, uh... Um, it was again about a ROM hack Super Mario World. And it was just about everybody, like, thinking Mario was an asshole. Basically. It's like, like, the videos brought up the fact that, um, a lot of these just take, like, beloved characters and then, like, take them, make them, like, really cynical. Or, like, put them in the worst light possible, and that's part of, like, the... the conceit <laughs> of the story. <laughs> There's also a creepypasta about, um... Ultra Instinct Shaggy, which I feel has to be tongue-in-cheek. <laughs> I refuse to believe that, that one's not done in, in jest. Also, it's it's so funny to me that, like, that's the term that we decided to call these and that we stick with. Because you could not have, you could not have a more silly sounding name for these things than Creepypasta. And also the origin of it is so, like, funny. It's just really silly that that's, that's, like, what we've just, what we just have. <laughs> there we go. There you go. There we go. I still have to finish Petscot, by the way. I was watching it with uh, my friend Lynn, and uh, we haven't had chance to uh, 
get back to watch any more of it. We were a good ways through though. Like more than half. For sure. That scop is cool. It inspired um gray area a bit. Mostly just in that um, I had a bunch of lore for Grey Area that I was planning to just explain outright. Like the characters that you meet in the game were just gonna explain stuff to you. Um, but Pet Scops, the way it explains stuff, um, inspired me to uh, not be so forthright. Well. It shouldn't be the, the, the merits of letting people figure out what's going on on their own. <laughs> Oops. Let me go back around. I think I actually want to leave this room and go back because there was a bomb bat thing over here. No, I don't. No, I went. There we go. Let's see if it's over here. Blood whistle sounds like the edgy sibling of the vine sauce kazoo. Yeah, the diarrhea kazoo. <laughs> the blood whistle. Um, I use Cooper a lot. Let's upgrade him. Cooper looks like he's from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. By the way, with that with that bandana, I'm just realizing he could he could play Squirtle in the movie. In the they could get Cooper to play Squirtle in the um, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon movie. Okay, can't do that. Go on, Cooper. Peep the Cooper? <laughs> yeah, peep that Cooper. Boom. Oh yeah, since I got a lot of viewers here at the moment, uh, it would be a good time for me to mention about my Patreon again. Um, I'm still looking for more pledges there. I could really use it. Um, and if you do, you support all the stuff that I make. You support the stream, my videos that I still plan to make some more of this year. Um, you support my art. The game dev, everything. Um, and if you pledge at least twelve dollars, you get art from me every month. Um, and I have links to Patreon underneath the stream and in the description of uh, all my videos. So <laughs> thank you if you go check that out. Oh yeah, and related to the stream, of course, still, if we, uh, get enough, uh, I will stream, uh, Wario Land Virtual Boy in 3D with Biss. <laughs> I say every time, but I still gotta get that set up as, like, an actual thing on the Patreon. Hey. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, Peep the Horror is so funny. Oh, also, speaking of art stuff, I need to change my little VTuber thing here soon, because I've changed my look a lot. And this isn't accurate anymore. Well, it's pretty accurate. It's not like it doesn't... It's not like it's not me at all, you know? <laughs> Go with this. There we go. I'm probably going to change up, uh, like, the look on the stream in general. Like, not like my splash screens and stuff, those are still fine. But, uh, I want to change, like, my banner and stuff again. The last time I majorly did that was basically a year ago. I did that January 2021. <laughs> There you go. So I think it's due for my stream to change up a little bit again. I mean, I guess it was a fairly major change to start having the little VTuber thing on, but... Not as far as just, like, graphic design stuff. <laughs> Speaking of uh, Virtual Console, and speaking of Virtual Boy, I still wish that they had uh, done uh, Virtual Boy Virtual Console on the 3DS. Because it could have been in 3D. And it could have solved the problems of the 3D on the actual Virtual Boy. You know, like... Having it be, uh, like, only in red and black, and, like, only, like, right in front of your face, and etc. I mean, the Virtual Boy only had, like, two games in general, so saying, like, it's the only good game on there is, like... It's not far off from just saying it's the only game on there. And still being correct. <laughs> Boop. Boop. Yeah, I feel like Virtual Boy Virtual Console would have been really nice. It's a shame that they never figured that out. Yeah, it's got a teeny tiny library. 22 games total, says Ruby Hexagon. I've heard that the Jack Frost game is good, too. Although that one was a uh, Japan exclusive. Um, what was that other one? Tellerobaxer? Is that what it's called? Okay, that one's kind of neat. And Mario Clash. Like, a lot of them are, like, neat, but they're, like, tiny. They're, like, tiny games, and so it's weird that they were, like, full releases. There was also plenty of stuff that was planned, but wasn't ever released on the system just because it had such a short lived lifespan. And, uh, I always, I always think, of course, that, um, the Virtual Boy didn't even have the lowest sales for a Mario game ever. I think, uh, Mario Clash still sold more copies than the Bowser's Inside Story remake did. So... <laughs> I feel so bad for, for Alpha Dream.
<laughs> I feel so bad for them. It was really Nintendo's fault what happened to them. My favorite thing that they put on the Virtual Boy was um, that they made a game. They made a a game about for the movie Water World on a system where the only colors are red and black. And it's a game about water. You couldn't have worse colors. <laughs> so funny to me. Blood world. <laughs> the virtual boy was kind of just uh like because like whenever there's technology like that they have to pare it down for the consumer version right um the virtual boy really suffered because the technology required for it it just wasn't quite ready and so to pare it back to be consumer like price point they had to pare it back way too much And like that's that's why like the fact that it has the red screens is because just the red LCDs were less expensive. And they, that's how much cost cutting they had to do to get this thing to be viable was like they had to use the cheapest parts. So <laughs> I I would love to own a Virtual Boy someday. I probably would like play it once, but uh, they look nice. I would love to have it on display, you know. Okay, this is the job for Bombat. I can't. I can't be doing this. This is a big risk. No! 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 <laughs> that was a terrible idea! This place is ass! I can't believe that there's only one save point, like, at the beginning, and that's it. Somebody said AVGN in the chat, and so now I'm just... my brain is like, ass. This game is ass. There you go. Yeah, I like it in Mario and Luigi as well. Also, I think, um... I think Super Mario RPG has the same blocking mechanic, question mark, does it? Am I correct on that? Uh, I remember it not being so bad there, though. I don't remember what was different. It's been a while since I've played. Boom. Boom. Is Goombario's best here? Maybe we'll make progress today. 
Also, oh, also Abyss. Um, let me know when you're ready for us to stream Raymond. Will you be ready in like an hour or so? Because that'll be perfect. Wrong button. Okay, Biss. I mean, some some enemies, when you defend, you don't take damage. Adam. But that's not always the case. Here's where it's supposed to go. Oh yeah, I gave myself more badge points. I should check on badges. See. Destroy a weaker enemy with a spinning move. I don't think I have anything that's... Uh, we'll, we'll try that. That might be helpful. So you have to fight all of these guys. Luigi balances the fact that you can get through every battle without taking damage by just sort of making the methods by which you dodge things different constantly. So that it's it, you always are working to uh, like like it's different reflexes you have to have for different things and stuff like that. So there's always still the chance you'll get hit because it's changing up the mechanics all, all the time. Whereas. Uh, in this game, it's just always the same thing that you do every time. <laughs> right, I still got more of these to do. It was terrible timing. the swooper. See, look, now I don't take damage. Come on, Goombario. I'll have Goombario tattle. Ghost bat? Interesting. Interesting that they get described as ghost bats in this game. I think the only, like, completely traditional RPG that I enjoy is Pokemon. You know what? Since Goombario's here, I'll have him tattle. 
dried out and became mummies, then went to live in the ruins. Okay. And I think the only reason I like Pokemon is because I grew up with it. <laughs> I remember a thousand year door being popular with the with the kids at school when it was new. <laughs> I remember kids talking to me about it. Ow. Alright, let's get him. Also, um, I think I mentioned in the server briefly, I don't know if anybody saw, but I'm planning to stream Cave Story this year. Probably pretty soon. Whenever I finish one of the things I'm currently playing through. Cooper. Because I haven't played Cave Story since, like, 2015. And it's been on my mind again, just sort of randomly. Well, actually not completely randomly, because I'm working on something in Grey Area that is inspired by Cave Story. And, cave, and Grey Area in general was heavily inspired by Cave Story. Because I started thinking of it in 2015, which is when I played Cave Story, so... There you go. I'll be playing the the regular PC version because it's free and not tied with Nicholas. <laughs> I mean, Cave Story in some ways does feel kind of like a proto Undertale. It's got similar themes and like playing with story with video games, that kind of stuff. They do both take place underground. <laughs> I 100%ed Cave Story. I did like the, the, the true ending and everything. In fact, I remember specifically uh, beating the super hard true final boss while sitting in English class. <laughs> like under the desk. Because I, I played it on 3DS originally. Uh, it's kind of a shame about Nicholas, though, and and what they what they do with the stuff that they get a hold of. Because uh, the switch, the switch port of uh, Cave Story sounds awesome. It has a physical release though, so maybe I would buy it used. That Nicholas doesn't get my money for it. <laughs> And, well, I bought the 3DS version, uh, but back then I didn't know about Nicholas either, so I don't really worry about that too much. And, like, I have that one now, <laughs> but... <laughs> I, I also think about getting... I've been thinking about getting Cave Story 3D, because if I got that, it would definitely be used and wouldn't be giving them any money, so... <laughs>
There we go. Oh yeah, speaking of Undertale, one sec. One sec. My girlfriend sent me a surprise gift yesterday. Um, it was really nice. I'll show you what it was. He was just like, you should have a package there today. And I'm like, oh, what? Package? It was this little, little box, like perfectly cube shaped box. Also, that didn't work. Let me put this on my desktop. Um, and I open it up, and I got this. Isn't that nice? Also, it came pre-dusty. I only realized that after I took the picture. I feel like this must have just been sitting in a warehouse for a while somewhere. <laughs> there you go. This is on my shelf now. It's really nice. It's a whisk. <laughs> I was really happy to get that. Girlfriend is very nice. Seems to be very well. I don't even know what the occasion was. She's just like, here you go. I'm like, oh, okay. She's really nice. What the hell is that thing? Okay. I'm just gonna eat a mushroom so that I'm on the safe side of things. Uh-oh. Oh man, that's fast. That's tough. Bombat seems like she'll be good. Oh my god, please. I think I gotta do Bombette's big bomb thing. I don't have any other choice. There we go. <laughs> we need more FP. Okay. Oh, I see. Sasha knew about the surprise frisk. <laughs> Sasha and Shiny were in cahoots, apparently. Ah, poop. Okay, Gumbario. Fuzzy beetles look funny in this game. Oh man, it's just, it's, uh... <laughs> I just realized I'm having a lot of trouble with Buzzy beetles, aren't I? The, the beef between me and Buzzy beetles has continued on from Super Mario Bros. Deluxe into this game. So this game came out in... 2000, right? Or was it... 2001? I'm trying to figure out whether this is newer or older than Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. Because Super Mario Bros. Deluxe was uh, 1999. Is this 2001? Okay. Okay. 
good time to tattle on it. Are cute but mean. And bop, bop, dead. I think the Wii U had a similarly short lifespan. Well, I, well, no, the Game Boy Advance had a really short lifespan. It came out. The Game Boy Advance came out in 2001, and the Nintendo DS came out in 2005. Like it's a, it was the Game Boy Advance had an absurdly short lifespan. Like it did continue on alongside the DS for a little while, but like not really. Like they they wanted it to be. They wanted they remember the oh DS was 2004. Excuse me. It was even shorter. <laughs> um. Yeah, I always forget whether it was 2005 or 2004. It was 2004. Um, but yeah, that's like, what the heck? Because it was supposed to be like the GameCube, the Game Boy Advance, and the DS for a little while there. But then the DS quickly just, like, how did they think that was going to work when the DS could just play Game Boy Advance games? Like, come on, Nintendo. You know that's not gonna, like, they're not gonna just live alongside each other. People are gonna get the DS and just play Game Boy games there. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I did. Well, eventually. Like, I, I had just the Game Boy for a long time. In fact, I didn't know the DS existed for a couple years into its lifespan. But, like, I just gave up my Game Boy after I got a DS. Actually, I got my DS after the DSi was already out, but I specifically got the DS Lite um, because I wanted to keep playing my Game Boy games on it. Uh, we're leaving. Uh, I'm gonna leave this place and go save. I, cause, yeah. <laughs> I really just need to do that. I'm not having a repeat of like the last two game overs I've had. No way. Also, I can do this since I'm going here. There you go. I remember being amazed, uh, listening to uh, Game Boy Advance games through headphones because the DS just had a built-in headphone jack. And I was able to, like, actually hear the sound, and I was like, wow, there's, like, all these, like, instruments and, like, there's, like, stereo sound in these games that I'd never heard through before through the Game Boy speaker. I do want to refurbish my Game Boy Advance SP. Uh... Ruby Hexagon. I have mine. I had a SpongeBob Game Boy Advance, actually. And it looks like crap now, to put it lightly. And it has a problem with the screen where there's like a bunch of like pixels, lines of pixels across the right side of the screen. And it doesn't affect a lot of games, but it's annoying anyway. Um, and it's the kind of problem that seems like it's just a bad connection. So, like, I really, really want that screen to just work again. Like, I want to, uh, I, w I hope that just disconnecting the screen and reconnecting it will fix it, because it's the good screen, the backlit one. So it will be really painful <laughs> if it just is busted. Because I didn't know how what I had, you know? I didn't know, I was a... I was not the smartest kid in the world. I'm not the smartest kid in the world now either, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't treat that thing the best that I, that I could have. I've treated each of my video game consoles better, like, every time I get one. They stay in good condition for longer. <laughs> With each successive one I have as I get older. <laughs> Thank you. 
Da -da -da -da. Um, speaking of handheld consoles, uh, I'm planning to collect some more 3DS. Like, I have most of the 3DS games that I wanted to get. Because I got them when they were current and new. In fact, some of them I got on launch day. Quite a few of them I got on launch day. Um, but there's still some that I, like, missed. And I'm, like, I'm sort of, like, scraping the bottom of the barrel at this point. Because, like, most of the stuff that I want to get is just kind of, like... People will hear the games that I want to get, and they'll be like, What? Why do you want that? Like, like I want to get the Angry Birds trilogy on the 3DS. <laughs> I also want to get Metroid uh, Samus Returns, though, because I really liked Metroid Dread, and uh, that game seems pretty similar as far as gameplay, so... I'm, I'm kind of easing my way into the Metroid series backwards, because I started with Metroid Dread, Um, actually, I've also played, uh, the first Metroid a bit. First, actually. But Metroid Dread is the first one I've played through all the way properly. Um, but Samus Returns looks cool, because it's, it's got, like, Metroid Dread was kind of based on that one in a lot of ways. And then I kind of want to play, uh, Fusion, because it's sort of, like, the next one in the series before uh, Dread, so it would be cool to play that. <laughs> this goes here, actually. Ta da! The Lunar Stone. No, you don't! Oh my god, please no. Bombat will take care of this. Uh... Thank you, Bombat. <laughs> it's a good thing that that's who I chose to upgrade, huh? Cause that moves really good. Takes a lot of flower points, but still. So there's another stone somewhere, huh? We need a triangle. This triagonal sign. Did I just activate some people in the chat with that quote? You know what activated me the other day was, um... Somebody said bods in front of me. And all I could think of was, um... Mighty Beans, which I hadn't thought about in years. Like, Neuron activation occurred, and I remembered Mighty Beans. <laughs> Mighty Beans were popular at one point. I like, I like, I remembered how popular they were, and I was like, really? Mighty Beans? Because I look at them now, and I'm like, these are so ugly and weird, and why did anybody like them? I don't understand. <laughs> But I had a million of them. I don't... <laughs> but the bods thing was at one point they made like these silicone like bodies that you'd put the beans in and like their face would poke out of the face of the thing. And like... I don't know. Explaining this stuff to people nowadays is like... Yeah, they were like these little like cylindrical shaped things and there was like a metal ball in them and they, they like roll and they had these extremely ugly designs but i remember they were so popular that there was like bootleg ones like you get like off-brand mighty beans in like the like the little vending machines where like normally you'd have like candy or something in them they put 
like capsule machines, you know? They, they had capsules with little off-brand Mighty Beans at the grocery store, I remember. Which is just bizarre. Why were they that popular that they would have, like, knockoffs? And I remember they made, like, big beans. I think there were special big bods for the big beans. I had, like, a special... I, I still have, somewhere in my closet, a special edition Mighty Beans box set. Like a, that's like a big, like, tin container with, like, special edition Mighty Beans in there that all glow in the dark. I should get that out and, like, take pictures of it and show y'all at some point. I remember that was, like, the big Christmas present I got one year. I was so excited. I, like, why did I... Mighty Beans? <laughs> it's so funny. Alright, let's get Bombat out to begin with. <laughs> it's, it's just... I'm amusing myself by just realizing how incredulous I am about the concept of Mighty Beans at this point. The similar thing that I got into years later, that I think wasn't quite ever as popular as Mighty Beans were, but they had they had they had their popularity was uh, Go Go's Crazy Bones, which were like a reboot of like a similar like little collectible toy thing from like the 90s and early 2000s, and then they brought them back in like the the early 2010s, and I used to collect those. Those were a lot cuter than Mighty Beans, though. <laughs> Those ones weren't weird, ugly things. They weren't bean-shaped. The Crazy Bones are really cute. And there's a there's a Crazy Bones DS game. It's got to be trash, but like, God, is it not tempting to 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 get it and sit <laughs> have it in my collection? I still gotta play those Club Penguin DS games I got a couple months ago. I haven't had a chance to play them yet. I probably will soon. Those ones are actually good. I watched a I watched a review of them, and like they're especially good to get now because they like they like preserve parts of Club Penguin because like you know Club Penguin's gone now, but like there's they, these DS games port some like aspects of Club Penguin into them. And so it's like a permanent record, like just like a permanent copy of some Club Penguin stuff. And like, it's kind of cool to have. Especially the second Club Penguin DS game, it just like ports directly over some of the missions from, uh, from the actual Club Penguin. And so it's just a permanent record of those missions, basically. And it's neat to have. <laughs> I don't think I ever actually did the missions uh, when they were a thing in Club Penguin. I think I was kind of past playing Club Penguin at that point, so it'll be interesting. It's interesting that I can revisit them now because they're preserved in this DS game. <laughs> and it ports some of the mini games too, which again is is really neat, including the uh, the minecart one, which is my favorite. I used to play that one all the time. Mario, what are you doing? Mario's performing the ritual. Smug Sasha just reminds me, Sasha, that now that you're on the, the $12 tier of my Patreon, you get, uh, you get, uh, doodles from me. And, uh, she requested, uh, that I doodle a smug hat kid, which I'm looking forward to drawing. I drew that on uh, when we played Gardic Phone, remember? <laughs> oh yeah, there's the smug Ralsei dance I gotta download so I can put it on my stream. Remember? Because it's like blue screen. Look at him, he's round!
wrong with you? Touch and Koopa. Yeah, there's also Club Penguin rewritten. I've heard mixed things about it. There's like a couple of things that are like that. And there's been like problems with them, I think. It's been weird. Also, one second. I have. I gotta read something real quick. Tata and Koopa will have to wait a minute. <laughs> one second. Okay, one sec. Almost done. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let us continue. Should regret this. I'm just thinking about King Tut from the Batman TV show. Batman! Screw hammer at him. Bombat will probably be back. But for now, Goombario. Leg. Come, Chomp, come, bite this intruder. Oh, Lord. Oh lordy. This is gonna be an elaborate battle, isn't it? He's one of Bowser's followers and he's been assigned to guard one of the star spirits. Pharaoh complex. 30, huh? I guess this this chomp is not worse than the, the chomps we fought earlier. <laughs> but like, I think what's nice about the DS games is that they're physical copies, right? And like, I will always get to keep them. Whether or not, like, the, like, servers for a rewritten or anything go offline or how those things choose to preserve it. I at least always have these, you know? I feel like, I feel like that's, that's useful. <laughs> Okay. Alright, I just had to write something. Okay, let's continue. Get all the way up there. Aha! I'm a magical genius? What? Great. 
fantastic. This is a hell of a thing. Ow. Ow! Come on! Oh my god, 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 oh my god. This is it. This is it, Bombat. It's your time. Ha! Ha! Ouch, what are you doing? That hurts. I'm king of the desert. You rude, rude man. Take this. The sound effect. Woo! Well, he's kind of out of stuff now. I mean, he could bring another chomp in, I'm sure. If he wanted to. Oh, he did it to himself again. Well, we're just gonna do it again. Why not? God, I loved, I love Bombette's big bomb move. It's the good beans. Tetan Koopa's almost done for. It wasn't so bad at all with, uh, with Bombette. Oh. Okay. Wrong helper. I hit the button. Oh, well, I did that, though. That's pretty good. Ooh, the chomp died, too. Cool. Well, that wasn't so bad. It looks really intimidating, but it wasn't bad at all. Hi, come here, Chompy. Uh, what are you? Ow, help! Can you believe this game? So this is this came out in 2001. So this game is about to be 21 years old. This game is allowed to drink. Think Koopa the wizard and freed Omar. Take another wish granting star spirits. I'm 25 now, so that means that the that means that the the thing that I can do now is rent a car, <laughs> which seems way less exciting than being old enough to drink. Mario can drink. Paper Mario can drink now. I still have never uh, drank alcohol though. I've been old enough to do so for like four years. Never, never even thought about it. You can see happier than a smile from you, Peach. You've imprisoned all the guests from the castle. We're the single greatest disaster to ever befall the Mushroom Kingdom. <laughs> 
I'll tell you what. I'll smile when you make everything as it was before you showed up. Jerk Mario just beat the Koopa Bros and Toot and Koopa. Complete wimps, but they are still loyal to me. I can't forgive Mario for disrespecting me. Invincible Tubba Blubba? Your nastiness. Kimmy Koopa, it's got you so riled up. You look upset. What? The star spirit flew away from Tubba Blubba's castle? Very soon, Princess Peach will hear you. You're ready in the time it takes to eat a tuna cheese salad. Well, good. That's great timing, Bis, because I just finished uh, the boss battle and everything, so... <laughs> it's a good stopping point here pretty soon. Let me the details over there. There he is, everybody's favorite. Twink. <laughs> Did you hear him call that Tubba Blubba thing invincible? I'm trying to find out what about Tubba Blubba. There's no time to lose. We won't get anything done if we stay in this room. We get to play as Peach again. I like that this is a recurring thing. It feels quite warm. Yeah, they just put you right back in if you go that way. <laughs> yes, I know. I've done that before. A photo of Mario. Have a comfortable bed. Okay, Princess Peach's favorite flowers. It smells incredible. At least she's got stuff that she likes in the room, I guess. Instead of. Oh, can we still just do this? I thought this. Really? They didn't block this off? Oh, at least these captors aren't very smart. Incredible. Okay. Bowser put his diary away, I see. Okay. Oh damn. Guards who can all guards who are all nearsighted. Be extra careful. Nearsighted and hard of hearing. Give me Final Fantasy IX vibes. A little bit. Ah! Time to try again. Oh, Shan got activated by the triagonal sign earlier. I knew somebody would, and I knew it would be you. If if anybody. Yeah, I wanted to get that badge. You can find a way to get it to Mario. Oh, hell yeah. Power Rush Badge. 
Murray is in danger, his attack power increases by two. Can I send it to Mario just by checking it off the castle? Perhaps? Oh, there's a thing up there, too. He loves eating ghosts? He, what? Of Gusty Gulch. The heck? Which time a blubber is invincible? This is a secret that would ruin him if it ever got out. What a concept. Eating ghosts. <laughs> Isn't that something that... Wait. Eating ghosts just makes me think of the, the Joel... The Super Ghostbusters thing. There's a secret you have with. Sick Tumble has a weak point after all. Think someone knows we're goofing off in here? Help. Nope. <laughs> I mentioned Super Ghostbusters and now Sasha is activated. Thank you, Mari. At last I can head home to Starhaven. Tamar. Do my best to help you. Present for you. It's up to two. Lullaby. Okay. <laughs> we need to go back to recover in Star Haven. Goodbye, Mario. I'm off. McDonald's have a ghost in the burger. <laughs> yeah, I told you. I I hear eating. I hear somebody likes to eat ghosts. And what else am I gonna think of other than that? <laughs> I should maybe do at least one fight here because um, I'm really close to leveling up. And you look like just enough EXP. <laughs> I couldn't help myself, I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, nothing for you. My hammer is stronger now. So I need five more. Oops. Hello, welcome. Um, just gonna jump. Jumping still kind of sucks, actually. I probably should just be using the hammer. <laughs> Gimmick account?
Okay, what do I want this time? Uh, flower points and badge points are good at the moment, so I think this time we'll get a little bit more health. Ah! Oh, come on, get out of here. I don't need your experience points anymore. Yeah, get out of here. I can never get out of the thing where when I want to, like, do something good, I, like, press the button harder and hurt my thumb. My thumb hurts with how, with how hard I push it to try and block things in this game. I don't... I can't make it stop. I just press buttons hard when I mean to do them good. There you go. It's a curse. I can't stop. I can't stop hurting my fingers trying to do the do the thing good. Actually, why am I going back to the town? Well, you know what? I'll just do it anyway. No reason not to just go back to the town, right? Like, why the heck not? I think I have a letter for you. No matter, mouse. Here you go. Duly delivered. Mousetafa? Can't remember who he is. <laughs> Oh yeah, take this as my thanks. Nice. Okay. You can save here. Were all these people here before? No, they weren't. Quiet, girl. The heat of the desert isn't anything compared to our passion for adventure. We've got many rare goods here at Dry Dry Outpost. But later, we're totally stopping at the legendary Dry Dry Ruins. We're going to be filled with stories when we get back home. Let me, let me, let me go look. Over here. Hey, Biss, are you ready? Should I should I switch over? Did I switch gears and switch over to Raymond? Woo! Okay, I'm just gonna do this real quick. Cannot be. Followers of that evil Bowser had already entered the ruins? So you scared them off. Colonel thinks of Mastafa. Ah, oh, so that's all that was for. I guess I gotta go back to Toad Town now, huh? Well, we'll do that next time. Yeah, the streamer is me, Shan. <laughs> Hi, I'm the streamer. If I was a streamer from Paper Mario, uh, Origami King, which one would I be? Is there a blue streamer? That's the one that I am, if, if, if there is one. We're playing the first Raymond, Shan. Oh wait, let me, uh... Let me make sure I save.
There we go. Ta-da! I'm still so tempted to play this. I know that the emulation's kind of poopy on this, but also, like, it's right there. And also, it might be interesting to see what it what it's like. How poopy it is. <laughs> oh, it's so tempting. I love Ocarina of Time. I haven't played the original version. I wouldn't be on stream, at least, but... Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's tempting. Anyway. Uh... Yeah, I'm going to be uh, gone for a minute. For a few minutes. Um... To set up and get this. And... We will... Stream Raymond. So... See you in a short while. And by that, I mean like two minutes, probably. <laughs> See you there, everybody.